Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Associated Press, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is the Associated Press. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. How do you read us? Well, good, mor good morning, everyone. Marcia Dunn here speaking to you from the National Space Symposium at Colorado Springs. Uh, obviously, the big news is tomorrow's two space anniversaries. Commander Kondratyev, how do you plan to celebrate tomorrow on the space station, and what are your thoughts on the eve of the two big anniversaries? Uh, please let me answer in Russian. I think tomorrow all the people on Earth will celebrate this event together with our students, colleagues, students, with all the people who support space exploration, who believe in the future, and who would like to participate in the development of space exploration and the world in general. It is two events. Fifty years ago, when you started, when human beings dreamt of flying to Earth, to the stars, and it happened. Fifty years ago is a short period of time in history, but look at that leap from a small spacecraft to a huge international space station on board of which we are now. And we hope that during the next 50 years, another leap that is not less than has been done will be done. And, and sir, how do you expect to celebrate tomorrow on the space station? Do you have anything special planned? Завтра. Uh, Tomorrow, on board the station, we will be talking our, to our friends, our colleagues, and us will be recalling what has been done during this period of time of 50 years. We'll be discussing plans for future, we'll be wishing our friends happy exploration day, and we'll be talking to many people interested in space exploration. And as tomorrow night, we'll come together, all six of us, to celebrate this event. Thank you. Uh, for Katie and Ron, um, it's been 30 years since Columbia's launch on the first shuttle flight. What are your recollections about that day in 1981 and your thoughts on the eve of that anniversary as well as the Gagarin flight? Well, having flown twice on Columbia, it's a very special day for me. and. You know, I don't actually have exact recollections of, of that day, except to think that it's, it's what people are supposed to do. We're leaving the planet, we're living outside our Earth's atmosphere, and it's just what pe it's a normal part of life. I grew up in a family where um, exploration was part of life. My dad was a deep sea diver. And I just remember being so excited about these steps and thinking that it would be amazing to be part of them, and now I'm pretty amazed that I am a part of them. Ron, could you comment, please? Ron, could you comment, please? Yeah, it was a very significant event for me as well. And, um, you know, I had just graduated from high school a, a year or two before that. And, um, you know, for me, just a kid growing up in New York, I, as far as I knew, we didn't have a space program because it was uh, before uh, Skylab and, and, you know, the shuttle hadn't launched yet. So, you know, I had a dream as a, as a little kid of becoming an astronaut, but I kind of lost that dream 
because I, you know I didn't see anything happening in space. But the day that the sh the space shuttle launched that first time, I went to my advisors the very next day and and started enrolling in math and science courses. And and you know that dream was re reawakened in me. And and for me, that's a pretty strong um, evidence, pretty strong evidence of the of the importance of the space program towards uh, education and inspiring young people to to study math and science. And for the shuttle anniversary, do you have anything special planned, the two of you being the two Americans on board? Well, I think we're just, you know, as, as all other Americans are, we're just going to recognize the day. Um, you know, it, it's it's a, a wonderful coincidence that it also, you know, coincides with the 50th anniversary of the first human in space. And, and those two significant events, you know, we're going to spend the day tomorrow uh, recognizing it in, in probably the best place you prob possibly can. That's on orbit and, you know, looking at our beautiful Earth and, and you know, celebrating with all those people on Earth that are, that are recognizing the anniversaries as well. Well, you know, tomorrow is also the day that the administrator will announce where the shuttles will go in retirement. Uh, either Katie or Ron, which cities and museums are you rooting for? What's your pick? You know, I grew up all over the country, and so I actually have ties, I think, to every one of the cities that are targeted. So I think my future's set, and I'm trying to be impartial. Thank you. Um, uh, perhaps for uh, Commander Kondratyev or, or one of the other cosmonauts, I understand there will be no Soyuz flyabout during Endeavour's upcoming visit. Can you fill me in, please? Um, is that for sure a no-go? Uh, excuse me. I will be uh, use uh, Russian language. Что относительно облета Союза, это очень замечательная идея. Мы сейчас имеем уникальную возможность документальные видео станции, history making even and if we are given a chance to perform this activity it is going to be a most important the primary task entrusted to our expedition thank you uh, thank you and uh, perhaps for katie or ron endeavor's upcoming flight is going to be the next to the last for the shuttle program is it hard for you two to, uh, to imagine that the shuttle program is almost over? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, again, you know, we're looking back over the history of, of the space shuttle and, you know, it's it's remarkable all the things that it, it accomplished, whether, you know, the satellites it launched or the satellites it recovered, the, the Hubble Space Telescope and, and the major role that it played in building the International Space Station. And I think, it, unfortunately, it's going to be many decades before we have that capability. The capability that the space shuttle provided us uh, was really amazing. And, um, you know, it's going to be bittersweet when the last shuttle uh, lands uh, on that day, and but you know, on one hand, we're going to recognize all the accomplishments, and but on the other hand, we're going to look towards the future and, and look towards the next step. And I think I have time, perhaps, for one more question. Um, for I'm sorry to say again, but for Katie or Ron, um, so much attention has surrounded Endeavour's commander Mark Kelly, given his difficult family situation, as one of the crew put it recently. Do you expect all the attention on his wife to draw away from the actual mission itself, perhaps overtake events, or, or no? No, not not at all. I think uh, you know Mark is a professional, um, and he is. Uh, you know, I flew with him on on his last flight, and um, when we delivered the Japanese module that we're in right now, and I can tell you that uh, he is an amazing individual who can focus on the job. He'll get the job done, and uh, he won't allow the, those distractions to to interfere his uh, ability to command the mission in any way. Well, thank you on my behalf. Godspeed and happy Cosmonautics Day tomorrow and happy shuttle anniversary to you all.
Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Associated Press portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from CBS News. Station, this is Bill Harwood, CBS News. How do you hear me? We read you loud and clear, sir, on board the Thank International you. Space Station. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you guys taking time for this today. I'd like to start with Commander Kondrachev, if I could. Uh, kind of repeating questions you've just answered, but as everyone knows, tomorrow's the 50th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's flight back in 1961, and I was just wondering what your thoughts are on this historic anniversary as you orbit Earth in a space station that Yuri Gagarin could never have imagined. Yes, uh, right. event is great significance. You know, United Nations organization reported that this event will be celebrated the first human flight to space. Many people contributed to that first. Космическая эпоха, которая настала, да, это действительно дает человечеству огромный толчок в развитии. Представляет развиваться, создавать новые технологии. A new impetus was given to development of new technologies to the progress. It's of it's of great significance to the development of all the humankind. Thank you. And and how do you guys plan to celebrate this anniversary on board the space station? Well, officially, it's a, it's a day off uh, for us. Uh, in practice, uh, we will not have uh, any uh, technical task more than the one required to maintain the station uh, in orbit or, or to maintain the station. Uh, but we will have uh, several, uh, if not a dozen, of uh, uh, events where we will talk to a school, to uh, meetings uh, to people, uh, to a lot of people uh, celebrating with them uh, this uh, important day. So it will be our way to recognize uh, the event, recognize the feat of uh, Yuri Gagarin, and recognize uh, the fact that humanity that day left uh, the world keep keeping going for uh, looking for exploration and looking uh, outside. Thanks. And let me ask uh, a similar question to, I don't know, how about Andre Borisenko? Uh, Andre Gagarin's flight was a, a tremendous achievement for the Soviet Union, and I'm sure it's an honor for you to be on board during the anniversary. What, what comes to your mind when you reflect on the significance of that first manned spaceflight? Я чувствую, я счастлив, что I'm мне выпала в эту знаменательную дату выполнить свой первый космический полет и то, что я нахожусь здесь на борту. Безусловно, меня переполняет гордость того, что мы прилетели на корабле имени Алексея Гагарина и то, что мы приступили к своей вахте на международной космической станции. I feel, like my friends, that we have a great responsibility because people will be judging on the results of our activities, the achievements attained by space exploration. Thanks. And uh, let me ask uh, Ron Guerin a question, if I can. Uh, you know, Ron, 50 years ago, Gagarin's flight really kicked off the Cold War space race, and arguably prompted NASA's push to the moon with Apollo. And now here we are 50 years later, NASA's giving up its own manned spacecraft and is going to rely on its former Cold War rivals for transportation to and from orbit. So I guess the question is, I mean, that would have been unimaginable a few years ago. And so I guess part of my question is, is this a case of, it almost seems like tortoise in the hare kind of a scenario. Is it short-sighted politics in the U.S. or is it just normal evolution in a, in a high-tech ever like spaceflight? 
Well, I, I think the important thing to realize here is, you know, 50 years ago when that first step into space was, was taken, it was a competition. It was a, basically an antagonistic competition between two nations. And But what came of that space program, uh, you know, even at the, at the height of the Cold War, you know, somehow these two nations that were not, you know, always very friendly to each other found a way to cooperate in the space program, in the Apollo-Soyuz program. And, you know, now look at us, you know, on board today, you know, we rep represent 15 nations, but we really represent all the nations of the world. And, you know, I think that's the legacy that the space program brings. It, it brings people together. And I think, you know, this might be my own opinion, but I really believe that the world is a safer place than it would be otherwise if those first steps weren't taken into space. But the, the other side of your question was, you know, are, are we abandoning our, our role in space by, by retiring the space shuttle? And the answer is no. This is a, a necessary step that we had to take so that we can go on to the to um, you know the next step that we're going to take in exploration, the he the heavy lift b boosters and the and the uh, spacecraft that will take us out of low Earth orbit. That's really the, you know what our goal is is to get out of the business of low Earth orbit, turn that over to commercial enterprises, and to get on to what NASA and the other government agencies are, are really designed for, and that's exploration, is pushing that envelope and going farther and farther. Well, you know, it, for Katie Coleman, you know, what, the way he phrased looking at the space shuttle, you know, I always tell folks that yeah, it might be time to replace it, but everyone's going to miss it when it's gone. What do you think of the legacy of the shuttle on the 30th anniversary of, of STS-1? Well, we're right now, you know, sitting in a or floating in, in a module that was brought up on the station uh, on the shuttle, as well as many other parts of the station here, and. You know, the, it, it, there's just too many things to count. I myself was on a mission where we launched the Chandra X-ray Observatory, and I still get little emails every single week telling me what kinds of images Chandra is bringing back and what we've learned about dark matter, black holes, and our very own universe. And so I, I think that these, these things that we uh, have gained from the shuttle are um, intangible and, and yet so important. And one of the most important is what, it, what the space program does for our young people. It makes them want to know things and be curious and sign up for math and science so that they can be part of the, the bigger future. And so when I see a space shuttle, I really see the, the younger generation inspired by that, and I see, uh, I see our future um, richer for it. So I'm, I'm sad to see the, the space shuttles go, and at the same time, I'm looking forward to the next steps. You know, Katie, I was uh, watching 2001 A Space Odyssey for about the 50th time the other night, and I was struck by how believable that vision of giant space stations and moon bases was back in 1968. Are you disappointed humanity hasn't done more in space in the first 50 years? Well, you know, there's there's really big steps and there's a lot of small steps that are necessary. And, and I will say it's frustrating um, sometimes. And, and, you know, even here on board, we'd like to do some things right away. But actually, it takes a lot of, you know, small steps to make sure that everything is lined up and in the right place and that we're able to do things safely and actually in a way that's going to make them work. And, uh, you know, by nature, I think all of us as astronauts are somewhat uh, impatient and want to make a lot of things happen. But we have to uh, be a little patient. So I would like to, I would uh, wish that we had gone further, and, uh, and I think that's just human nature, and I'm sure that we're going to go further, but both the small steps and the large steps are important. You can't get around it. Thanks. And the last one here, and we may lose your answer, I'm told, uh, because of coverage issues, but, um, you know, May 5th is the, is the 50th anniversary of Alan Shepard's flight in Mercury, and that's kind of gotten lost in the, in the URI anniversary and the shuttle anniversary. Just wondering if either the U.S. astronauts had any thoughts about Alan Shepard's flights. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think that's a you know a very important milestone to recognize as well because that's really you know where we as a nation got our start, and what came out of that first step was landing men on the moon and and uh, um, the space shuttle and the space station. So I think it's a, a very significant event, a very significant date to to recognize. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Associated Press and CBS News. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.